have to always have a bit of music. How's everyone out there today? It's quite zenny, isn't it? It's got that zen feel to it. Ignore the voice, just the music. <laughs> you know I'm crazy. But anyway. Welcome to Standing in the Truth Saturday Sports Edition Show. Boom, let's do this. Let's do this. Are you ready? Let's get ourselves a bit all jerked up. Come on. Today, I have the wonderful, enigmatic, Spencer Ferrin joining me shortly. How you all doing out there? Let me see how the chat room is going. Yep. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Everybody in the chat room, how are you doing? Sitting in the train, watching the world go by. Looks like rain, rain clouds in the sky. See the tiny houses back in the distance. Train can go fast, but no rain resistance. All kinds of thoughts going through my mind. Ways that to help and improve mankind. Could be too late, but this world's in the mess. Some youth nowadays can't make no progress. Ain't got no cash in this world recession. Perfect lyrics to today. I'm just another Londoner, just another Londoner, just another Londoner, just another Londoner, stuck in the So now what? Okay, that's enough of me today. That's enough. How you all doing out there, across the world, everywhere, how you all doing? I want to say big Diwali up to, um, happy Diwali I should say, to all the Asians across the world. Um, before I even kick in into the show, um, I just want to spread some positivity that in this time of lockdown it is so difficult. Um, some people need music in their lives, some people need sports in their lives, some people just need a hug. So whoever needs a hug, I'm sending you a hug today. Um, but most importantly, I just want to make sure that whatever we're doing, that we're doing it to the best of our capability and we are um, holding on to, you know, our mindsets as best as possible. Anyway, without further ado, I've got Spencer Ferrin on the show today and he will be joining me in about 10, 15 minutes. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to just just literally cross the borders and talk a bit about sports before we go anywhere else. Today we have the F1 qualifying with Lewis Hamilton looking for pole position to literally capture his seventh championship. Now, what I don't get is this, how, you know, no one seems to big it up. No one bigs it up at all. Um, but I'm not going to get political because there will come a time that they're going to miss this guy when he does stop actually driving. So... Good luck to all the drivers today that everyone is still safe. But Lewis Hamilton is going for his seventh championship. And I think it's 93 poles, if I'm correct, in that respect. Um, those the golf heads, people who enjoy golf. Um, Johnson, the Masters are on its way at the moment. I don't know if, if anyone's been watching the Masters. I like golf. I, I actually like all sports. So for me, it's absolutely fine. So we've got Johnson, who shares the four way at the Masters at the moment. Um, McElroy has, has dropped away. Tiger Woods has dropped away 6-3 for, um, under par. But let's see how. We're on day three. Kicks off today, roughly about 2 p.m. Tune in for all the golf heads because it's a bit weird because normally you'd have the crowd. There isn't any crowd. So it feels really weird not to have them at the Masters or even at the Ryder Cup, come to think of it. But yes, 
that's what's going on today. So let's get behind Tiger Woods. Not but all the players, actually. But um, Ram's doing very well as well. But it's a four-way split at the moment. Day two. Today's day three in the golf world. Now, if there's any swimmers out there, the energy standard, we've got our lovely PT, you know, competing. So swimming is now back on the agenda in COVID. There's water. We can't even go, we can't even go to have a sauna. But anyway... The swimming is back and you can catch the ISL semi-finals energy standard live on BBC Sports. You can actually see PT competing today and the rest of the England team. Ireland sends Wales to the sixth straight defeat in the Autumn Nations, um, um, Nations Cup in Rugby Union. So for all the rugby heads out there, well, at least England won the Six Nations. So at least, but Rugby Union, Ireland's beat, you know, sent um, you know, Wales back to their sixth straight defeat. <laughs> I'll tell you what's happened, though, for the rugby union heads. Argentina beat the All Blacks, the New Zealand All Blacks, for the first time. I'm telling you, 2020 is a spooky year all round. I, I, I can't fathom it. I just can't fathom it. Tonight, we've got a lot of sports going on tonight. We've got Kate Taylor boxing tonight against Gutierrez. Um, Spencer will touch on that a bit later on. We've also got our own Kel Brooks fighting tonight. And we've also got him against T. Burt Crawford. For those who are not probably into boxing, I am. But T. Bud is on tonight fighting our own special Kel Brooks. That should be a bit of a taster. But before we get to Kel Brooks, there is an undercard of truly amazing people on today. Um... I can tell you who they are. Let me show you. We have Doherty versus Cullen uh, on the underboard. We've got Ball versus Guani. We've also, who else have we got today? We've also got Franco versus Maloney, Harper versus Thunders. It's, 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 it's a good, it's a good lineup today. Very, very good lineup today. Okay. I am still waiting for Mr. Man to join me. He should be here very shortly. Very, very shortly. So, let me give you a bit of background. Yes, he's in the chat room. I'm going to give you a bit of background about Spencer Ferron. Spencer Ferron actually um, originates from South London, Forest Hill. Um, he, has a, a, he had a big, great amateur career. And with that amateur career, he decided, you know, it's, I, I don't want to go too much into it because I want him to tell you all about his amateur career because it's so exhilarating. We've got all the photos up ready to speak about that career from amateur career he then went into professional boxing i won't tell you how much is in there as well but he went in to be a professional boxer he was named spencer the spirit ferron so anyone who's old enough okay to remember spencer the ferron the spirit ferron he's brash he's bolshy he's everything uh, i think everybody in south london knows spencer ferron i'm an essex girl so I just like boxing. That's how I got to know about him. But on a professional note, Spencer is deep, rich, steep in history. Friends with Danny Williams. And we're going to touch on that because it comes from the, you know, the Don Davies camp. But that with that being said, um, the thing about Spencer is that he knows boxing all the way through. He can probably go back as far as Jack Dempsey. He can quote fights that... It's ridiculous. Not even I can do that. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I like boxing, but I'm not saying I'm a, you know, a, a big step head into it. But Spencer has that knowledge. Um, and what I found enigmatic about him was when I did discover him on Instagram, because he has a massive following, he didn't shirk. He is the type of person that you would get standing in your truth. That's the thing that I love about Spencer Farron. And I just had to have him on the show. I had to have him on the show because, you know, we have people that are out there that will do, um, you know, commentate or, you know, they sit on the fence. Whether you're black, white, it doesn't really matter. But people tend to sit on the fence when there is issues to be spoken about because they feel that if they say anything, it will go against them. And if they say too much, it can go against them. So they're scared to show their true value of who they are. Let me tell you, Spencer Ferron does not do that. He keeps it real. 
absolutely keeps it real. So, oh, I think he's just sent me a text. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, he's coming in. He's coming in. He is coming in. Can't wait. Absolutely can't wait. So, as I was saying, he says it as it is. He's gone from being, he's been on so many different channels with, um, with Bounce on Box Nation. He's commentated on Sky Sports. He has commentated for ESPN. But again, I'm waiting for the man to join me so that I could actually delve into him himself. I mean, it's not that he's had cont controversy, but the fact is that he's had people that's tried to challenge him. He's had um, things that has happened to him that, you know, even though they've tried to squash him, he has maintained that professionalism and no one is going to knock him down. You know, he makes sure that the people that are around him, he's also an inspirational speaker. And so what he would do, he's, he went to Lahore and, you know, literally gave training camps to the children out in Lahore, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Again, I will touch on that when he joins me. And with that said, he then goes into the schools and he keeps it real. He doesn't, you know, he, there is no, this all, ah, here he comes. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Now, let me see what he's got to tell me. Oh, has he gone? He's coming in, he's coming in. Right. Okay, okay. So it looks like, did you hear that? That's him trying to talk to me. Because I can see him, but he can't see me. So now, I've got to resend the link to him again. The things I do, the things I try to do to be professional, eh? Right? <laughs> Doesn't happen in my world. Every week there seems to be something. But it's Saturday, so people's got to do their own shows, don't they? So I've now just sent the link to the lovely Spencer. Let's see if he will get that. Let's see. And give me a couple of minutes. He should be joining me. Um, I think you can all still see me. Yes. Here we go. So I have said that to him. And when he comes in, I'm actually going to say to him, brother, what are you playing at? I sent that link to you ages ago. What are you playing at? We've got people here waiting to see you. Let's see. Just sent the link. Here we go. Here we go. So, if you've got any questions for our lovely Spencer, please drop them in here. I have a number that you can, um, you know, even if you know him and you actually want him to say something um, to you or hail you out, the number, the studio number is 07 450 853 045. That is 07 450 853 045. And, oh, I can see him bubbling up at the side. Hey. Hey. I know I get really excited. I do. I really, really do. Because it's taken me a while to trap him down. And when he said he was going to do the show, listen, I'm just a little lonely. He jumped at the chance. He was over in Wakefield and he decided that he's going to get back to London. And I can see him. I can see him. Oh, come on, Fencer. Stop messing about. Why is it that when people try to link up, right? Um... They have an issue. Okay, here we go. I'm now having to talk him through it. <laughs> here it is, here it is. Let's see. Come on, Spencer. I've invited you in. Okay, I'll tell you another way. He's really having gremlins. I really do apologise, folks. He really is having gremlins. Um, and he did say that because we did have a test show today. Let's see if I can do it another way. Let me type it in for him. Whilst I'm doing that, uh, I should have just let the music play, shouldn't I? <laughs> Guest. Here we go. Beautiful. All right, let's see. Are you in, babe? Are you in? I can see you. I can see you. Can't you not see me? AZ. And I'm listening.
Apologies. Let's see. I'm clicking him. Please let the sound go through. Yay! Yay! Hey! Hey! <laughs> How are you? I'm really good, sis. I'm oh, good. my days. I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I was no, here going... I'm not really computer savvy in that. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I, I have to click on it and go to it, and you have to copy it and go into to, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mari. So, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> How are you doing, Miss V? Uh, hey, I'm not too bad. I'm so tired. There is so... Spencer, I lie. This is... Let me just tell you this. There is so much history about you, right? It's, it's phenomenal. And I'm hoping that people are going to be excited about you as much as I have been. But I didn't get to bed till about half past two, three o'clock. Because okay. I'm serious. I literally was... I mean, I, I know about you. And, you know, we've, I've watched you all for a long while. But when I had to dig deeper, damn, Spencer, really? So I want, well, I know I want you to show the public. So I know we're a bit late going on. I am general public. Please meet Spencer Fearing, Mr. Master Knowledge. Give him a wave, everybody. That I've got the chat room going. I've actually got people joining in the chat room as well. I'll give out the number so they can talk to you. Thank you for coming on my show, my darling. Absolutely appreciate it. Absolutely doing, appreciated. Uh, on, on, on these kind of streams, and it's Spencer with a C, but don't worry about I'm, it. I'm, oh, my God. I'm te do you know I'm going to take that? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I wrote everything. Everybody, so you know what <laughs> Everybody's so, so used to calling me the knowledge or whatever, like people. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's, yeah, but like, it's what it is. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I, I'm, I don't care if I'm making, making that person feel bad. I wrote everything down because I do most of the flyers. This particular flyer, he goes, leave it. I'll do the flyer. When I, when he sent it to me, did I even proofread it? Right? Did I ever? Only when I saw it and I went, ah! <laughs> Sorry. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I start to pull it outwards. Oh, Ray Banton's in the house. Junior Banton said to say, hey, bro, what are you saying? The knowledge. Yeah, man, I have to big up Ray, man. I'm <laughs> That man's been supporting me for over 30 years. So um, I found out, Nigel, um, you know, Jumping Jack Frost messaged me again this morning. Um, when I told him that I have you on a show, he said, oh, my God, I grew up with him, you know. That's my brother. Um, uh, that was yeah. me doing my best Jumping Jack Frost voice, by the way. No, it's more like that. It's it was like, like, yeah. <laughs> but, nah, you know, you know what? It's, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's like anything, everything's a blessing, yeah. you know. Everything's a blessing. For real, Everything, for real. Like, like, um, like jumping Jack Frost. I was raised by my aunt. Okay. And I'd go home on the weekend, so on on the Cali estate. Yeah. Right? Uh, Annesley House. My aunt used to live at the top. So I, I grew up, I was raised with my, with my, with my uh, three cousins. Um, yes. Yes. Owen and Donald, we I was going like, to ask you about them later on, but go ahead. Go yeah, say, they were, talk they it. Were, they, were, they, were, they were like, I don't know, 10 years my senior. Oh, wow, okay. So, so everybody thought I was their little brother. Me growing up in that in that area, everybody thought I was there. So remember, I'm, I'm growing up on a Cowley estate, like Mostyn Gardens. I grew up around sound people. Uh, and uh, so when I grew up with my, and I'd go home on a weekend, so I'd, I'd go from Kennington was a predominantly white area. On the weekends, my parents, I'd stay. And on the weekdays, cause my parents went to work. And uh, my, my my aunt had ill health. Okay. So she had, she's come from high blood pressure. My aunt passed away this year as well. So it's kind oh, of... Oh, yeah, I did see that, actually. Family. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear yeah, that. Right. So my aunt, my aunt Pinder would have me in the, in the weekdays. But... So my aunt kind of raised me, so everybody thought I was her child. Oh, so her children were actually like my brothers and sisters. Not actually, they were, they, I can't say like, they are my brothers and sisters. sisters. Yeah, so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was one of those things. So underneath my aunt, um, Barry G lived, yeah? Wow, okay. And so so Jumping Jack Frost was there, and their man's, so these men have become like... Family. yeah. Of the jungle and the house and Gary's scene and that, but these men were underneath. Live they lived underneath my aunt, so as they lived under literally underneath, like we're on the fourth floor, they're on the third floor. Okay. So 
Like, even though they're older than me, so I'd always be in their house jamming, listening to tunes, da da da. So yeah, so like yeah, jumping jack for us as well. Never one of the guys they just a real supporter. They seem like, and I ain't changed. I'm actually the same person. So he said, that's exactly what he said. He goes, what you see is what you get. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I and I can see that. I absolutely see that. That's the beauty about it. That's exactly what I see. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump straight in because on the same subject that we're on right now. So you're you. I, it says that you're from Forest Hill, and I hope you don't mind. You know. Um, you said you were brought up by your aunt and obviously I remember seeing a post a quite a long time ago and it was saying that your father passed, I think it was 2005, is that correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a, a young age, so, you know, forgive me if I hope it, you don't feel too badly bringing that up, um, but it's, I want people to know the person that I'm, I had to learn and, you know, um, admire for where you are today. Um so your father, you know, passed in 2005. And I remember it's, from what I read, it was it, it was a challenging time. And it, it, I guess it grew you up as a man in the same time. Is there any, is there, could you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, well, how it was is this, it's like, when my, when my dad died, I'd been retired from professional boxing a year and a half. Like, I retired October 30th. First. And I'm coming back to that very shortly, but yes, okay. Yeah, Don't give away too much. For my last pro fight, I yeah. remember retiring from boxing, and I was a kid that was never really into road things or anything else like that. Carl was in the gym, and uh, when my dad died, it, it cut me up a lot because I was very fortunate not to come from a broken home. I, I didn't have a broken home. So I had like I had like two sets of family. So I had my aunt, and then I had I had my biological parents as well. Yeah. So and and anyone want to look and say, oh, what's going to done well for yourself or all the rest of it? Well, people, don't, you see, like the old African proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. Then I know verbatimly that I'm I'm the product of that village. Village. Yeah. 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 So everything that I've done now, and I'm I mean I'm I'm grateful for for you know, the things that have come into my life. But when my dad died, that was serious because at the time I was, it, it was a, it was a mad time. At that time I was going for a divorce. Uh, you know what I mean? Which was all my fault as well. So I'm not going to turn around and say like that. The show is about standing in your truth. So just be yourself, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know what I mean? I, uh, I was going for a divorce. I was, I was in, it was, it was a hectic time because I was going back and forth with uh, 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 family members. When my dad died, I stopped talking to my mother. I stopped talking to my my, my biological sister. We stopped talking. It was a, it was it, it was, was deep. Time. Yeah, it was it was deep. But death does this, you know. Death does this. It it, it does this. And and um, what I realized is like with with life and time as well, you really got to take people for who they are and, and not for who you want them to be. Absolutely. So certain people can be a certain way, and you're gonna just like. You know, if you, well, no, you, got, you we have to learn. This is part of the evolution. Yeah. We, like, we've got to take people for who they are. That's because absolutely. I, 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 friends, close friends, guys that I know to this day, they most probably put their life on the line for me and vice versa, even though we don't talk. But what I've learned is that you got to take people for who they are and not for who you want them to be. And when you take people for who they are, then it's, it's less of a burdening challenge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so, well, you know, so you've come back, you know, your father's passed, and how did you mend that? How did you mend, you know, the, the, the situation? Was it over a period of time? At the time, at the time, at the time, when, my, at the time when my dad died, um, what was it, like four weeks after? You know I mean? I was on remand for money laundry. <laughs> and then while I was on remand and fair play Danny Williams former British heavyweight champion Commonwealth champion yes yes uh, uh, put up my belt money he put up half a million quid for me wow I got bell, and then it, I became very reflective in my life I'm saying like the things that I want in my life wow I'm writing out my plans I was saying like at that time Amir Khan was 
was having his last amateur fight, which they aired on ITV. And he fought a guy, Kinderland, who he lost to in the Olympic final. Um, and I remember watching, listening to the commentators, and I'm saying to the and this remember, I'm in Brixton Prison at this time, right? And I'm saying to these guys are rubbish. Like, <laughs> if I had the opportunity to go do this, I would do a ten times better job because I pride myself on, on my historical knowledge and, and the way that I can convey boxing so people can understand it. So, I remember coming out of there, we opened up a gym, we all started to train people, then I went, and I got my manager's training and promoter's license. I became the youngest person ever in British boxing. Which we're going to come back and touch on that. Yeah. It, I definitely, yeah. To, get, to yeah. get those licenses. And then when I got those licenses, I started to train fighters, manage fighters, and it just grew from there. Okay, um, well, let's, let, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's walk it back a second. Let me, let me walk it back to you there. So you, um, it's while you're in prison, you said to yourself, I'm knowledgeable. I'm watching, I'm sitting everything here going on. So I'm going to go back to your amateur days. Let's go. So you were, you started boxing at what age? Started boxing around about eight years old. And you were an amateur boxing? Um, uh, amateur boxer. boxer and yeah. we're down at the Brixton and District Amateur Club. Yeah. And then I'd go in and there sporadically. Then I went back there when I was about 12 years old. Okay. Uh, and then it was like me, me and Danny Williams were like, bench and back we had guys like Don Charles who trains who was former trainer of Derek Sazora Don Charles was like our senior because of his age uh, so we had good guys around there in, in boxing and you, you learn from people so one guy would do one thing they'll steal from him they'll still decide it goes like when so you've got a group of talent pool was you, with, was you with Don Davis as well because I know that Danny Williams was with Don Davis at a certain point because I had um the lovely Richard Davis on the other day and he was saying that he he's knowledgeable of yourself and he was saying with Danny Williams and everybody else you all know each other it's like yeah. you know Don was you part of that yeah, camp as well yeah. How, yeah how it goes how it goes is this is like Don didn't really train Danny Williams he was around Danny in the gym ah. what it was what it was it was John Sims who runs the Miguel's boxing gym ah. he was our head coach at the Lynn Club because we left and we went to Lynn we went to Lynn ABC uh, I would say about about 1989 right right the Lynn ABC which is behind Burgess Park yes and when we went to Lynn they had, they had accomplished guys there because the Lynn was like at the time the second best amateur club in Europe okay so they had the Repton then it was a the Lynn then the Fitzroy Lodge would come into the argument but the the the, the Lynn ABC was was it was the club so our old coach there John Sims, he branched off in later life and opened up his own gym from his brother Steve ah, Sims. Okay. They were both our amateur coaches and they opened up Miguel's boxing gym. Yes. And I was the first professional to box out of that gym. Right, right. Since then, there's been loads of guys. Yeah, I can see that, that right here, the Miguel's gym. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I've done props to Miguel's gym. And like John, John Sims, I'm still very close to John. John's big age man now, but it's mad now. Like, those guys, they especially Steve Sims, his brother. They said, "But well, we always knew you were going to do something like this. We always knew this. Like what you're doing right now, and we we're not surprised because we knew." They just knew that's what how you were going to be. Yeah, they just yeah. knew that. I mean, I've got some pictures up here. Of I don't know if anyone can see. Can you see that, Spencer? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> this is Spencer in his heyday. So that he's about this time you'd turn professional. So when did you, so you were an amateur boxer and then what year did you turn professional? I turned, I turned pro um, June 27th, 1987. And 19, 1997, sorry, 1997. 1997. On the, on the undercard of Herbie Hyde um, versus um, Tony Tucker for the IBO. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. That undercard. And I fought the fight just before Herbie Hyde because I was a floater. When okay. you're a floater, because yes. you have your first pro fight, they don't they don't really slot you in. They say, well, we'll slot you in when there's a space. When there's a space. Fight. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of fights ended early. I remember Penny Reed won an uh, 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 international title. And then they moved they moved it on. And I, I, I got the slot. And I, my slot was to fight just before Herbie Hyde. 
and Tony Tucker. So, yeah. Those are names. What legend names? Legendary names. That's yeah, excellent. Yeah, and that was your first. That was your first pro fight. And, my first pro and you fight. won that fight straight away. I you won, won that, that fight. fight. With a very freaking hard fight. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> my forehead. Is that your forehead? Yeah, so I'm beating people. Mark Sawyer is a rough and tumble guy from Bristol. He just came at me like no one is here. It was a rough and tumble. I remember winning that fight. I was running around the, the, the auditorium afterwards saying, yeah, I'm an undefeated pro. It was the same night that Mike Tyson famously bit Evander Holyfield. Holyfield, yeah. It was the same night. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, when they're saying like I was from Forest Hill, I'm not, I went, originally I'm from Kent and, and Brixton, right? Okay. But I bought a house with my ex-partner when we were, what was he, 20? Nine, twenty, twenty-one. When, house, first, when, oh. when houses was dirt cheap, <laughs> you, you were at forty-five thousand. Yeah, it was cheap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. We bought, we bought we bought a house together. So I was living in Forest Hill, and I was training in in the gyms there. So I said, "You build yourself out of Forest Hill." There's a guy called David Jones who owned the gym down there, and he said, "Yeah, say you say you build from out there, and we'll build up your fanfare." And we did because I said I was a prolific ticket seller. Um, yeah, I'm not even saying and I'm gonna, don't say anything because I'm going to come to that as well. There's so much about you. Oh yeah, my god! Yeah, prolific ticket seller, man. So you, yeah. yeah, that's why the Forest Hill thing came into 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 play because but I was. There was I, one fight that you did do, and uh, I think it was um, against Stevens, and the commentator said, um, "This guy has got so much flair." I, I I had to play over and over again. This boxer comes from Forest Hill and he's got so much flair. He goes, but I tell you what, if the way that he, he goes, the same flair that he has with his mouth, because this, <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, brother, please. But you have gone on to prove exactly what that commentator said then. In my eyes, that's what he's yeah, done. Yeah, that was pound for pound the best talker in boxing. Boxer. Yeah. I, do, do you know what I'm saying? And when I read that, I just started laughing. I thought, if only he knew how prolific that came back to show what, who you are today. All right, so it, it's up to you. Do you want to tell him what your record was? What was your record as a boxer? It was um, I 18 lost six. Yep. Uh, four knockouts. Yep. And I got it all right here. <laughs> Yeah. Shit. yeah, you did 60 round. You did, um, you had a good knockout percentage of 53 or was it 23 and 53 percent. So, you know, you was a good box of the spirit. Now, well, you know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you. I wasn't, I seriously, I never can't. You know what I mean, like, I was talking to earlier today with one of my mates, Baba Tundi Ajay, who's a trainer of Anthony Yard. Yeah, big up, and, big up, Tunde. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like, I got Tundi to boxing and. It was like, in the gym, I'd batter anybody in the gym. You could put me in a world champion to spar, I would beat them up. But I I couldn't transform uh, uh, the, gym the things I was doing the, yeah. in the gym into the ring. And like in later life, now when I look back and I think about it, I know the reasons why. I know exactly the reasons why. Because not only for my own insecurities, but I couldn't transform it, but... You, for this for this sport, like with anything in life that you want to accomplish, you really got to be hungry for it. Yes. And you have yes. to be hungry for it. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult when you're earning. I'm, God's always blessed me. I'm an earner. It's like, I'm that guy. If you need it, I've got a, a ridiculous black book. I could contact anybody in anything. So what it would be is like, where my concentration level should have been, like certain guys needed it, I was, I had most of the things I wanted. Without so, would you say you wasn't hungry enough? Do you think that the hunger was not there? I know, I know that for a fact I was hungry because back then, when I think back then, little little change, but you think it's big money because yeah. you weren't used to money, yeah, right, yeah. So, and you 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 do other things or you get uh, blessed in certain areas, yeah. Uh, and so you think, then what? Why are you fighting? And right. not, not only that, it's like. Fighters, fighters usually have things to prove, and that's why they're fighting. Yeah. But if you had nothing to prove, then why are you really fighting? We're fighting for, yeah. Right. Yeah. Check out what I'm trying to say to yeah. you. So, on the reels, I never really had. Bottom line, I just wanted to be famous. I didn't care how I got there. I just wanted to be famous. I was going to say. Now I'm going to be real. I just want, I wanted to be famous. And I, I love I, your I, honesty. I, 
Yeah, and I didn't want to go to nightclubs and pay. Yeah. I didn't want to go to nightclubs and queue up. <laughs> Sorry, wrong. forget my laughing. <laughs> right. Sis, I'm telling you, V, I didn't want to go to nightclubs and queue up. Right? And oh, I didn't want to and, and I didn't want to pay. Yeah. And like if I had that, then in my mind, then I yeah. then, then then I made it. And if I had a nice car to drive, and everyone knows I've always had God bless me to I've had the nicest car. <laughs> <laughs> you can't name a car that I haven't had. I've had it. It don't mean nothing. Right, 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 right. So it was that, <laughs> and then you go with that, and then it's like, oh well, you got to be a ladies' man as well. And the ladies' man thing is 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 coming from insecurity because as you get older, Miss Maxwell. Yeah. Right. As you get older, you realize that loyalty is royalty. Loyalty. That loyalty uh, goes not only. Uh, for the things that you dedicate yourself to, like your profession and everything else, but you have to be low to to other people that have put you on a certain pedestal. Mm. And these are the things that you you learn through life. I can say this now because I'm I'm a, I'm a big man now. I'm not yeah. a child anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'm a big man with responsibilities. I've got I've got you know what I mean, four beautiful kids. Do you know what I mean? And and I, and I and it means a lot to me that I can look after the home in. In the way of how I look after uh, my you're home. A, yeah, that you've but accomplished. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've accomplished you know I mean? that. Okay, right. so you, you came to the end of it, you know, you've come to the end of that professional career. And, you know, did you find that you. I know you said you fell. Do you think you fell into everything or did you have that goal to say, okay, now that I'm no longer a professional boxer, I'm giving it up, I, I know I'm comfortable. Did you then say I'm going to be a commentator or I'm going to be a boxing promoter? No, because what, pay, what came first? Com- this right. I'm not a commentator. There is a difference. Okay, a I'm sports analysis. What would you difference. say? What would you say? Commentators have to commentate on what they see, and 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 they have to tell a story. I'm not telling a story. What would Why you class yourself? Company, I'm giving them. I'm giving them subjective opinion based on. The experiences that I've inquired, or acquired over over a space of time, and and also I'm giving I'm giving that also with historical accounts like what happened in this time when this fighter fought that fighter, and there are similarities in it, and I can marinate the two together. So that's what I do, sis. So yeah, I'm grateful. You know what I mean, I, you know I mean, I've been at every major TV platform. BBC. Yeah, I've got that coming up. So right, I'm gonna I mean, yeah. okay. So, so, so you yeah. got that. So we get when that. I like, when I I knew that I wanted to be inside of boxing, I wanted to be involved in boxing. That's right? the question, right? So okay. When we, started, when we started promoting, and the shows were mad, you go to my shows were incredible, right? But what you realize is this is like they. Can you see that? Yeah. The good old days, that's when I had hard knocks boxing. That's Joe the Catchball, one. That kid was a very, very good kid. Uh, uh, Joe Catchball, that's me and Twindy Ajayi. And that's the guy, right. The right dude in the background that you can barely see, there's a guy called Karen Baines. He approached me, he approached me in 2008. Right. He approached me in 2008 and he, he was working at Satanta Sports, right? Okay. And he goes, uh, we're starting this online presence. Then online things weren't so, ain't like today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, we're starting this online thing. Would you like to be the face of it? Right? He said, like, because I think you'd be the ideal person. And I remember when he, he, he when he came to me, I said, for real? I said, right, what are they paying? And it was decent money. Well. <laughs> you first thing you said was, what is it pay? Yeah, what's it paying, bro? You know what I mean? I'm wasting yeah. my time. And it was decent money and it was a good platform and it got my name out there. But then also it got my name out there to the fact that he said, you know what? We should start this boxing promotion things. I said, for real? Because see, you promote it. I remember I, uh, um, I signed something under the guys of City Boxer Pro, and then this guy came to me and said, "Yeah, you should. We should start something." I remember leaving City Boxer and being at the Royal Fight Club, and I had an office down there, and I was like, "Yeah, right, come, let's do this." And then from then, we just started to build. So it. that's how you and Kieran Baines got together. So yeah, we 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 breached together, and at the time, I was also training white collar, white collar. Uh, um, guys who want to do boxing, who want to learn boxing. Okay. So I'm training. Yeah. So I'm training these guys. Yeah. As, as I'm training these guys, they were like, "Hi, right, Spence." One guy came to me and said, just, "There's this uh, tax break scheme that you put your company towards. I could get you some money." I said, "How much money?" The man said, 3 million pounds." Wow. Yeah. So 
I got I got a lot of money invested in me to, to do the boxing promotion. It's not cheap. So all them shows that you see on YouTube now that I used to do back in the day, 10 years ago now, it's not cheap. So, but I'm grateful that I've got that leg up. Yeah. And I'm, anybody who knows you tell you, I'm not, you see, I'm not a mean person, you know. If I've got, everybody's got, that's how I roll. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I can tell that from you know just from first you and I first you you welcomed me with open arms from the get go from the first why, why, why time. We... I'm seeing I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a female in a in a in a predominantly male sport. Like most of the people that do the interviews and all the rest of it, right? You got to think. You go on the last the last show that I did, which is on YouTube on IFL, you got two hundred thousand views. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah, I've got you. Right, so. That's them, but everyone starts somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Anytime I touch anybody's thing, I, I touch. I touch on. I was just talking to them about this. I touch on. I get views. Which okay. I get views from people like me or hate me. Yeah, they but they know on. that you're talking the truth. It's yeah, not that you're being biased. They, they, they know they you're talking the truth, Spencer. But it's not the knowledge. What does he know? The, he's, right. a, he's a fake historian. Right. He must Google everything. Listen, yeah. I ain't got no computers around me. You can test me on anything. I'll, I'll blurt them out. Yeah. Reason why. So I'm actually autistic, sis. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, I actually suffer from autism. But not suffer. I, I have the ailments of autism. It's not high grade or low grade, but I, I know that I have autism. Wow. To, uh, yeah, to, cer- to certain degrees. And that's why my memory on on remembering dates for boxing is unprecedented. It is but, really unprecedented. And that's and that's that's the reason why it's not like, or uh, but you know what? Anything you're passionate about, you study, you, you'll recollect. Yes, you yes, because there's nothing of that anywhere. And what I mean, I, for me, you know, for, when I started this, it wasn't that. Oh, I'm just gonna just go and sit here, and I'm gonna, I. I, you know, I take it serious and I researched and I tried to dig and I delve and, and that was not one that, that, that one threw me because it just definitely wasn't anywhere that I could see that. So I'm so glad that you shared that with me. Yeah, you, you know, you know, know what, like not, not a lot of people know, but. Well, I'm honoured because you've shared that with me, you know, you know what I'm saying but, to you. But people know it's like, there's certain times, like people know me, know me. I, I do some off-key things certain times. I ain't going to turn around and say I don't think I do some, <laughs> I, I, I do some crazy stuff. Seriously, I've got. <laughs> and, you know, and you know that's because of your autism is that you know i'm gonna play you something i'm hoping you can see this can you we've got it. the youngest black promoter in britain here you got a message for him Spencer Phil. hey man hey. i have a i have a message for any promoter whether it be black white yellow or brown you know is to promote the people and talk exalt the people the people are the most important the attraction is what counts then you go recruitment to your investment, bottom line profit is the game. So when you go out there, you get people, you respect the dignity of people. And you go out there and you promote people and give them good shows like they seem to be. And when that happens, man, you're going to just keep on going. Be fair and square with you guys. And the better you get, the more you're going to be criticized. The more they're going to say you robbed them. So that goes along with the flow. You know what I mean? You know you're getting to be good when you start to do that. Yeah. You, you've been an icon and you ain't been a fighter. You know I mean, how important is it that like you got like this donkey brand? That's you like this brand that's donkey. Um, uh, being a man of color, always keep in mind all blacks are fighters from the womb to the tomb. It's just a word of arena. You, you got to continue the good fight. You in it to win it. Can't give in. You can't give up, and you can't quit. How do you know? How much of that did you take away with you? Because you were the first black promoter. Um, do you remember like, it? Yeah, I do. That was at like Vitaly Klitschko versus um, Samuel Peter Pete. in Germany. Yeah. And after the fight, um, Kerry was like, oh, yeah, go speak to Don King. And I was like, all right, cool. So he went over there and, like, he was very, very welcoming. Very, um, very encouraging to tell you the truth. I found like, that. There are bad things about Don King, but one, one thing you don't know there is nobody in sport that has made more black millionaires than Don King. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? So, as much as you want to say that, oh, well, Don's this or Don's that or blah, 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 Don King has to do Don King for the sake of doing Don King. Yeah. Uh, um, but is he an iconic figure? Absolutely, he is. Um, has he, has he made is he not a success story? Absolutely, he is. Um, 
so I got I got a rate Don King and the night. Matter of fact, that we I got to spend the whole day with him that day as well. It was, it was, a, it was a good thing, you know. I could, I could just only imagine. I mean, as I said, when I saw that, I thought, wow. Do you know the, oh, God. Oops, sorry. My, um, my light decides to jump out on me, but that's not a problem. Let me turn this one back on. Have we got light? And then there was light. <laughs> right, okay. So, Don King, I know that you, you were the first black. I, from what I read also... You were the first black promoter. You were the eight in, in for all in a row. First black promoter, first person to have your boxing license, right? And you were also able to. So I think it was four things that you had: the boxing promoter, your boxing license, all at the same level, and was able to have hard knock as your own boxing um, fraternity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All first person. I don't think well, there's been any other promoter yeah, well, that's the, been I that. The first, I was the first. I was the first person in British boxing history to get managers, trainers, and promoters license in one. That's season. the one. Yeah. So that. The first. Yeah. I was the first person to go through that. But um, then that's a drive, Spencer. That's yeah, a drive. Well, you know what? Not everybody gets that, though, Spencer. Yeah, I know, but you see, like when I when I first got it, it was a massive thing to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, now it's like, mm, yeah, whatever, man. We got we're moving on now, you know. But at the time, it was a big thing. At the time. And we're talking that time there, that's like 12 years ago. It was a big thing to me. But you wouldn't but understand no, that big... somebody's seen that though, Spencer, now, do you understand? Because there's a lot of boxers out there to this day who um, probably only going for the glory of money because they think that's all that's left. Or you've got those who can't see past yeah. When boxing finishes, what else are they going to do? The only other person that I've seen that's gone on to do anything, for me, in my eyes, in Britain, that is, is um, David Hay. You know, David Hay is... I, I, I'm just saying, if you educate me, if there's more. Because remember, I told you, you're probably going to school well, me. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is this. It's like, we're talking about people of colour, yeah? It's whether you want to align yourself with the fact of colour. And loads of people don't. So, and I understand why they do it. I, don't, I understand why people will toe that line because they know, like, if they if they don't toe that line, then they could be perceived as being troublesome or a troublemaker or all the rest of it. But then you see, just like your show is called I Stand On Truth, and I believe that God, whatever you want to call God, by whatever name that you want to call God, that God created this universe in, in truth, and, cre and we create our realities in truth because if we create our realities in a lie, then uh, uh, all that you're going to get will be uh, super preceded by a lie. Yeah. So you'll get your outcome going to be a lie. Yeah. But if you stand in truth, you'll get the truth at the end of the day. Now, the truth, as Bandini Brown said in 1975, sorry, 1974, October, uh, when Muhammad Ali beat George Foreman, he said, like, the truth tastes bitter to a belly full of lies. Wow. So... We know that we stand in truth. We stand on. We stand on that. So, I'm I, like I said. I'm grateful for the platform that that. I mean, boxing has amassed a lot for me. Boxing has enabled me to have a nice home. Boxing has enabled me to 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 be a provider for my family. I mean, boxing has enabled me that 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 my missus don't have to work. Boxing has enabled all of these kind of things for me. So for that, then I'm saying I'm grateful. But for me to turn around and say like, oh yeah, well you know. Like, what I did, I, I've got to see, like, the old me, when I was younger, it, those things were massive to me. Yeah, I'm this and yeah. But I know, like, along the journey of, of getting to where you want to get to and all the rest of it, I know that I've hurt a lot of good people. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to females. I know, I know, and I'm not proud, I know that I've hurt certain females. I know I've hurt, I've hurt people, male and female, but I know I've hurt females that were the most people put their life down on the line for me. I know that I've hurt those people, right? I know that I have not been who I should have been. I know that there was scams and deceptions and 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 I know that I've been a part of that. So for those kind of things, I know that I'm not proud of. I know that I can stand now and say I'm not proud of because I ain't really done... my. I know my biggest problem was always being with, with, with females. When I was younger, it was always females. It was like, why? You could drive in any area, run that girl over there, so that one, me up one over there, so one road, that's so one. Yep, I'm, I'm being real, but I can, 
<laughs> but is it does it? But don't you think? I mean, apart from your charisma, but that comes with boxing as well, though, doesn't it? You always no, find does, that the girls does, then. Ah, it, uh, it does. This is what I'm trying to. I'm no disrespect. I'm a handsome man. Yeah. Right? I'm telling you, it goes. Sorry. There was, seriously, <laughs> but there are certain men. Listen, there's certain men who are inside boxing who are not handsome. Yeah, right? but they still get but girl. They'll get, but they'll get the reason why because success, because they believe success, and if you think right. that's what you think success on, you're right. success on the fact of uh, 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 what you have financially. Yeah. But this how it goes is this is like when the aspect to your life is finished, you better make sure that you put down some money, or you better make sure you got another skill to bring in. That income, yeah. Because when I sit down and think about it, I never made no money from boxing. When I sit down and think about it, the most money that I made was my fight with Dave Walker, right? That was only thirty grand. And the thing about it is this: the purse for me for that fight was eight grand. I got twenty-two thousand pounds in sponsorship. Now we're talking that is two thousand and three. That's the most money I ever made. Wow. But then, that and that's money. today. That's chump change in today's in in today's what world. Today's, today's, even, even then, that was chump change, right? So when when I think about it, it's like you know what I mean. You've seen I've, I've flown around the whole world giving motivational speeches now. Pakistan, which again, I was coming. I'm going to come to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll check this one out. Yeah. For me just to stand on the stage, I'm getting twenty grand for half for half an hour. That's crazy, isn't it? So do you see the difference? Yes, yeah? that's crazy. When right. someone is actually being beaten up. And getting less money, but you're paying twenty grand to actually be motivational speaker. Right, exactly. So, like I said, it's like as you get older and as you look at things differently, you you you, you look at like I'm saying, there are certain guys who are in the game because they want the girls, they want to drive the fast cars, they want the, the and that's why I know that I never accomplished what I should have accomplished in boxing because skill wise, nobody could never deny my skills. But the thing about it is this, I had all of that because I was name brand before boxing. Yeah. Like, on yeah. the road, everyone knew Ross Smith was the guy, you know, so yeah. I was that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I had certain elders that would look after me, like, were, were known faces. They were doing their thing. We ain't going to go too much into what they're doing, but they were doing their thing. And they were the man that were kind of looking after me. <laughs> they had your back. So, yeah. Yeah, more so because I was a youth that was guy in gym. I was a youth that was in the gym. Yeah, they, and those guys... They they had that 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 sense of empathy, but they also lived vicariously through you. So when you were going, when they would see you on TV, that's their on TV. That's right. That's you know, nothing's changed. Is that still the way the world works? Yeah, of course, of course, it works like that. But what I, what I realize is because I had those things, it kind of stopped me from wanting to go further. If I had it a little bit harder, maybe I would have wanted it. And when I say that, I think I didn't have it easy. But I'm saying if I had it, maybe I had it a little bit harder. Or I had somebody like myself around then to try and pull me to one side and say, listen, this is what you've got to go do. But you see, when you're young like that, I was a really, I was a, a, a know-it-all. Cause I, yeah. I had things come to me quite easily. Yeah. So until you come out of that, then you've got more struggle for things. And, and then you realise, you appreciate the things that you get. So they when you did, so did you find you had the same sort of, when you had... Um, the, you know, the hard knock boxing, because that was your promotion. You had the hard yeah. knock boxing. Did you have people actually trying to knock you when you got into that as well? Because I have read, I've seen, oh, like, comments. Listen, and I was like, listen, really? Listen. You know? Worse. Because, number one is this. I'm not, I'm not pro-black. I'm not anti-white. I'm not, no, I'm pro-human. But I give homage to my lineage. And my heritage. And I love my lineage and my heritage. I love it. Yeah. I love that. I love the fact that I haven't got a straight pointy nose. And when I was a kid, my mom never tried to mess it up and try to hold my nose. When I was young. <laughs> I do remember. I'm, I'm grateful that I had. Right, that. right. You know what I mean? I'm, those, those things. Yeah. Right. So, and the thing about it is this. My, my parents had me kind of late. My dad was 50 when I was born. My mom was 39. Oh, wow. So back then that was old. You know, back in the seventies, that's old. Yeah. Right? So, so I had older siblings that could teach me certain things. I listened to old school things. You know what I mean, my dad was born. My dad was born nineteen twenty four. Wow. You know what I mean? So when my dad's dropping bars on me, that's the knowledge that I that I I was I was gratefully encompassed. Come, around. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So. I, I would understand certain things from young. 
So I could, I was a very good communicator from young. The reason why I was a very, very good communicator from young because I had elders that I was around that I could suck on knowledge. I never got, my dad wouldn't take me around no park or all the rest of it. I never got them kind of things. But what I did get, I got grounded in how to carry yourself, how to, how to dress smart, how to look a certain way, how to be presentable, how to, how to be gentlemanly like, how to, I learned those things because from the generation of where my dad came from, I know say every Sunday my daddy I get to buy iron on Tim Shirt for the week. And people you know don't, I mean? we don't do that anymore. Right. My daddy I don't know Tim Tire for the week. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. The reason why I bust ties so much is because my dad would have me from young like, oh do my ties. So from I'm four or five years old, five, I'm doing my dad's ties for him so he could go work. So those kind of things are those the, you can't, you can't, you can't that. buy that. You can't buy that. That you is something that's, grow, but not everyone gets that. So you've been fortunate. That's the beauty that, you know, I'm, but you, and you're a motivational speaker, as you said. So here you are with this hard not life. And, you know, I've watched it. I've seen some of the things that you're doing and, you know, no disrespect. You are out there. You're brash and you're like, yeah. So I can imagine the knocks that you get with that. You do you understand that that knocks that you would have got with that because everybody had is like, but but the, the the feedback from what I watched and what I've read was your fights that you promoted right at the get go, people loved it because you were matching everybody up fifty fifty. There was no mismatches. It's like you knew what the public wanted. You knew that the public needed to have exciting fights, and that's what you brought to the table. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What. Um, Go on. Right, no, no, and then you get guys who look on the blueprint of what you're doing, and they they took it to another level. So I, I was gonna, I, that's what I wanted to hear you say. Right, we've done lots of any earn, any earn by one. I mean, shall say, right, but that's... I'm reading because at least he speaks it. He tells my bro, you know what? I saw with Spencer, he's like, bro, Spencer's one of my earliest mentors. This is him saying that, and it's mad because them times I feel like I'm a young man, he's a younger man. But, you know what I mean? He's got his bus and he's done great. I can't knock the man for what he's done. I have to rate him for what he's done. You know what I mean? Seriously, I have to rate him for what he's done. I have to rate him for what he's done. Because right? I see a lot of him but, in you. I see a lot of... I hate these lights. I see a lot of you when you had the hard knock um, promotion um, and him. I see him... Well, listen, there's... Listen. Yeah, of course, but remember this part, right? Remember, I said, we have black people, and we have the thing, and we know the thing, right? And you have They're the style. You got the style. Them. Right? No, they do. They want it. Because remember when we first meet in there and you couldn't dress? No, yeah. that's part of it, right? <laughs> said, no, I'm telling you, you couldn't dress. I'm sorry. I'm trying to say that he couldn't dress. <sighs> that man couldn't dress. But you know what? Yeah. I'm grateful that he's got his butt because he's making man who I know. He's helping them earn. You know what I mean? Dylan White's a millionaire. Me not do that from now. I pick them when I call them a gym and I'm plimsoll or something. <laughs> I'm, a, right. I'm trying to be professional. You're just cracking me the hell up. No, I'm just telling you the truth. Right? So, when I see <laughs> Andy Joshua went to Saudi Arabia and chopped something like 60 mil, I'm saying, what? Yeah, I'm right. I'm saying, you're there. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, when I see... So, no, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not fighting down... Listen, everybody is where they are because that's what they're meant to be. Yeah. Right? But they learned from it. What I'm saying was, you were the initiator, the instigator. This is why when I'm talking to you. I need, I, I want people to understand that some of the things that you see today within the boxing fraternity, especially in the UK, you know, because it has to be a black and white thing. Right? Where did you, where did you see even boxers, even boxers, yeah, coming on TV and they're in suits all of a sudden? Where did they get that from? Where they get it from? Hard right. knock where, boxing. Right, right. Where they know where they get it from? Because Hard knock not, boxing. Where, right. They know say, listen to me, yeah? I got a gig down on ESPN, right? Yeah. ESPN Plus. So it's being down to American fights, right? For yeah. MTK Global. Big up MTK Global because I run their foundation. Yeah. And them man. We're going to come to that again. Yeah, yeah. Them man, the street, it's another level, right? I've got nothing but love for them, man, right? Anyway. I come on the thing. And I'm doing my bits on on ESPN. Go to Twitter. Everyone's saying, "Wow, look how this guy dresses! 
Where, 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 where? Da, da, da. Right, I'm saying like, one thing you can't buy is classroom. My daddy teach me that from my little picture. My daddy said you can't buy a classroom. That's right. The clothes you know don't I mean? make the difference. Okay, then. You say you cannot buy a class. And then, well, can we, can we push you to... And you, you put me in that arena, I'm going to shine. You did. I'm and telling you, you bl- I, I was like, who's this guy? Right. You put me in that arena. But you know what? I still, I still props them, man, because they gave me the leg up. And then uh, I was in the online stuff with Satanta. And then Satanta went bust. Yeah, so they, yeah, they went yeah, because they were on Eurosport. Do you remember yeah, the whole yeah, Irish yeah. connection? Yeah, yeah, and they went bust, and when they went bust, it was like, right, well, I have a job again. And then within that time, Hard Knocks like to push now, and I had an Albanian fight called Chris Nick Chattel. Yes, prolific. Yes, out, right, and he had an obscure world title. It was a WBF. It won't really mean that, but he was WBF champion. And but when I mean like he could sell tickets. My goodness gracious. Yeah. He won sell old arena for me. <laughs> he won. Because I owe that you a lot, you know. He knows that I am a lot. I love Chris Nick. We're still good friends today. And he was and an I, older boxer. He was he was coming he was getting yeah, older, he was wasn't he? Killing. He was yeah, an yeah, older boxer. Yeah, right? Not right. bad boxer, but older. So to fit yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. you tell the story because I don't want to take it away from so, you. Go. No, it's all right. So then Chris Nick Chris Nick coming in, there was a guy called Troy Trump Pro. You know what I mean? The Mongolian War. Was That's the it. The WBU cha- champion. Yeah. So, and like, we were saying, let's bring him over. He was back home in Mongolia. And like, remember, I just had a bag. I got a bag of money from, from investment. So, I said, yeah, I'm going to send for Troy. So, I sent for Troy. Troy came back um, to the UK. And, and so, we put him up. And then there was a, uh, so then we got Troy into the prize fighter. He won prize fighter. And off the back of that, we got a world title shot in um, in Indonesia, in Singapore, we fought. No, Singapore. Sing- we fought for a world title out there, and then we got um, Darren Hamilton. He won the British title, and this youth was a was a youth came down from Bristol. Like someone tried to bust gunshot after him, and he came to he left Bristol, came to London, and he came down. to one of my mates, Ben Dow, he said, oh, "I've got this guy Darren. He's not bad fighting." He's a light like, work well, He said, "Bring him down." He brought him down. And Wasn't he I the one that was a rapper? <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> I said, you know what, Darren, I said, Darren, you know what, if you don't become the minimum British champion, something's wrong, you know, bro. Yeah. And he said, for real. And like, I, you know what, well, God's bless me, I can put belief inside people. I can make people become a believer. I can tell you that like, we're going to run through that wall. You may not get through the wall, but I'm going to convince you that you can do it. You're going to try a team. And, and fair play to him. And he became British champion. Then there's another kid, Larry Kandayo, who couldn't get a license because all kind of mix up and because he weren't born here. And we managed to get my professional license as well. And I got in this state. Like, we battled really hard for them. And that, and that just helped through, through... There was a guy called Gregor Shaw who in, introduced me to a group of wealthy Worthy, investors. Wealthy, right, money. Right, I love that guy, Gregor. I mean, I've, now that I've mentioned it, I've got a gold folder. Um, <laughs> and he, he introduced me to, 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 to some wealthy investors. And we, we earned money from his tax break thing. But what felicitated me to... to to finance, to finance this boxing stuff, and it, 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 and that's it, yeah, that it was what it was. And then after that, the maddest thing was this: which one was the best? Which one is the one that got nominated the best fight of the year? That was Troy versus Jackson Asiku. And that's not just us talking. It was nominated by the full British Boxing Council. Yeah, 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 it was the yeah, fight yeah. of the year. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a incredible fight that that them two had. Wicked, wicked fight. It's on YouTube. Wicked fight. Yeah, I mean it's mad. Cause I just saw the picture of that. it came off my timeline, so I saw the picture of them two when I was holding up their hands. They had a wicked fight, and everybody was talking about it. And the maddest thing is this: we're in Bethnal Green, and we had it sold out. The Bethnal Green Young Pool was sold out, and you had a white man screaming for. Um, Jackson Isiku, who's originally, I think he's Nigerian. Nigerian, yeah, he is. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. he's not, not gone. I thought he was Ghana. He's Nigerian, yeah. 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 And, and, you, and you had white people screaming for Troy Trump Pro, who is a Mongolian, right? And that's when you know that like, boxing really does transcend everything and it unifies people. It does. It really does. 
There's no colour in it. I don't understand why people think they need to bring colour in. We'll, we'll come into that colour bit when it comes to bloody Deontay Wilder a bit later. But go on. Yeah, I, I don't want to get on to him, right? I'm just going to be real. I don't want to get on to him. But it's... So, like, I said, gratitude... Gratitude raises your altitude. And yeah. Like, for all the things that I did back then as well, I'm just very, very grateful. I'm grateful yeah. that my shows were like dances. When man would tell them, girl, they were coming and I would dress up and... My cousin came to a few. My cousin came to a few. My cousin came to a few. You're cool. Like, oh, boy, is that your show? Your show? I said, yeah, I put this together. I was like, you know what I mean? Like, what? Because I'm black, I can't do that. What's yeah. Like? You yeah, say? no, Spencer, you were big things back then, right? I couldn't yeah. even, my cousin was always going because, um, and I'm not name dropping, it's just that we used to move within with Skanker and then man there with Lennox Lewis, that fraternity. So okay. I was I was in that so, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Right. Blackie was. That's my cousin. That's your cousin? Yeah. So he would come to the shows. All That's my first come. cousin. <laughs> good man, you know. He's yeah, I think he's watching somewhere because he messaged me. All right, so he he come. He was the one that linked me to Lennox Lewis. So oh really? Yeah, two thousand nine. Lennox came over and I was running the Royal Fight Club, and he said, "Yeah, yo, big man, we want a gym for God, you know, the big man want a gym for come." I said, "Which big man?" I said, "Lennox, I come over if you could, oh, just for the youth, they put it on the life and go and and we did a we did a charity thing and then we raised seventy five thousand pounds." Yeah. I, I, I went. Memorial <laughs> Trust, right? And we gave every penny to them. If it was now, I'm going to keep a couple of grand for myself. And I'm going to like yeah. it. But, <laughs> but, I can't cope with you. No, I mean, you make me die. You know I mean? My man, I said, teeth, teeth, from teeth, and I'm teeth, and I'm. Yeah. Right? So, so, yeah. Um, and then Lennox <laughs> saw what we do with the hard knocks and said, yeah, man, I want to be the patron of your thing, you know? So, and then boom. That happened as well. Yeah, I was trying... I had a photo of him. Sorry, that's how... I was wondering, because I saw some photos of where he'd come down when you were doing the hard knot, and so that's when he came down and met you guys. Yeah. Some wicked yeah. photos. I saw them on shutter shocks, and I thought, wicked, right. wicked. Yeah. So I was wondering so, how the, the connection with yeah. Lennox came in. Yeah, and then from then, like, me and Lennox are proper cool now. So what happens is this, like, when Lennox has got big interviews to go and to talk about certain fights they're not rightly on their own point with, He's phoning me, like, and I give him a breakdown and he uses it. And oh, him, my days. Did you just say all of that? You mean, you have a dream of knowledge. Want some cash. Oh, my days. P-A-S-H. Yeah. <laughs> so you're the one that was giving him all the knowledge so that yeah. he could go and talk on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're rubbish. I can't believe it. So, Spencer, you come out of the hard knock. I'm just showing some photos here. When you look dapper, dapper Dan, you know, on Sky Sports. Was that, that was Sky Sports, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that was, that was uh, May, that was You're May. You're too much. How could you that, remember the date? It was May 4th, because when Muhammad Ali died. May 4th, um, 2016. Wow. When Muhammad Ali passed away. I was like, right, it's four years now since Ali died. Wow. And, and I remember hearing that he passed and... I spoke to Johnny and I said, Johnny, you got anything for Sky Studio? Because we're both working at Sky. Johnny said, no, nah, I've done my bit over the phone. Um, I remember at the time, the head of Sky Sports, uh, a man called Adam Smith, he was the head of Sky Sports Boxing, and he was in France. He comes straight over. Have I got Adil somewhere? Is this Adil here on the left? No, no, no. No, oh, I no it's Adil Anwar. I'm talking about. Oh, that's Adil, right, okay. So he, he comes, he goes in, and but, but you see, when I'm going, you're asking me to speak on my hero. I remember I smashed it because even to this day they Sky still use it. I'm no longer at Sky. Sky still use that 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 clip of when I spoke about Ali when he passed away because okay. they know I went in. Yeah. But then I remember the week later I kind of got into a little bit of trouble. That's cut out bits because I really did go in about Ali being a nation of Islam. Yeah, because you don't pull punches. No, the, you, no mate, punch you don't punch pull punches. You punch say it. it. As it is, and it's like this is what I was saying before you came on the show. Listen, if you're gonna be a person that's gonna sit on the fence, don't come here because no. you it's no point because you feel that you have to please everybody. But what happens is you're selling your soul to the damn devil. No, yeah, but listen to this one you see, when you're kissing up, if you kiss too much, arse, you know what happens? You choke on shit. 
Right? I just want you to realise that part. Then. I was going to say you eat shit, but you said you choke on it. No, you choke on it. Because you can eat it. You can eat. Enough people can eat shit and live, you know? Yeah, so for real? It will, ch- it will choke For real? So, you, you, you'll get... So, I've never been that kind of person. But I remember the week after coming into Sky to do the podcast... Ringside Toe to Toe, which is now a dead podcast since I'm not on no longer. I'm not even both. That's gone. Is that with Ed that, Robin? That was that with Ed Robinson. Yeah, Ed Robinson. Yeah, but it's dead now, and I'm. I know. I don't sit now saying good. I'm glad it's dead, but they never want. You know, it goes this. They don't want to give me the Jews like right, Spence. You're the one that's busting it in because they want to keep you in a box. Yeah. Right. And now, yeah. now, no longer doing the show. Their show is dead. And if you don't believe me, go look at their numbers. No, no, but I know that every show that. You, Natasha just says you kicked on the blood clot fence, man. Sorry, did I just swear on? T- yeah, I don't know, business. It's your, it's your team. <laughs> My girl just said you just, someone said that in the chat. <laughs> right, I'm saying, yeah, well, well, you know. Sorry, everybody. I was just no, repeating. No, so, <laughs> when I was, yeah, I was just being real. Yeah, because <laughs> everything that I've noticed, it's like you've gone on. There was one there where you and Johnny Nelson was on. Um, and I know you give a lot of um, kudos to Johnny. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that you I, I, what, what I've read in researching you that you really do give a lot of time to. But there was just one that I know you, you said with Johnny Nelson. Why do you give so much kudos to Johnny? Give, just give me a little bit about that. I'm going to tell you why. Right. And you've got to know because where you sat in London this year. I'm from Essex, actually. I'm oh, from Essex. Yeah. Right. Well, what, let me tell you this, yeah. And, I'm, and and because and I'm just keeping it 100, right? Because I'll speak to a black sister, you're going to get this thing. You see us black man that's born in London, yeah? We are so blessed to be born in London. You know why? Because we had black kings to look on. I mean, I care who it was. It could have been a look at drugs, man, you know? <laughs> it could have been the man. No, I can't, I can't we do. Right? Every time I think I'm gonna get serious, you just can't. Right, we, we, yeah, we still had kings. We had kings to look on. Yeah, we yeah. had yeah. Uh, um, dominant or predominant forces in the church that were of high establishment. And I'm talking real church, right? In in the Pentecostal churches that that lived this thing though. There are enough money in the church and take this thing, For real, for real, for real, for real. Right? Who lived this thing? And so we've had role models, no matter who they were. We had. Okay. Now, Johnny Nelson never come from that way. He saw a lot of black role models because he was a Sheffield Jew. He was a Sheffield Jew in the sixties. Yeah, when men say you never have no 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 real black heroes to look upon. Yeah, so all your heroes that you were looking on actually look different to you. Yeah, they actually look like the Jesus Christ that you were worshiping in yeah. church. I'm just telling you one hundred. <laughs> No, what, 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 no, but I'm telling you. I'm having thought. spasms. <laughs> yeah, right? Go on. right? So I was, I was talking to one of my brothers the other day after Procter and Roots. You know what I mean? Barrister is the property developer as well after Procter and Roots, right? And me, him, and my other brother, CK Fash, was out and we were talking. And man said, bro, you know how lucky you are to say that you were born in London, London. as a black youth? Because we had built up black areas where we had black kings. You know what I mean? But in Sheffield, had, it's not had, like that. It's a whole different. It's different. Like, we have black kings that that when they shot Cherry Gross in 1985, right? We well, said so no, we're gonna lick down Babylon. For real. You understand? Yeah, so for we, real. We, we were we were we never we weren't born with that subservience where we're gonna look at someone as being superior. To. Yeah, yeah. We never had that in us. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? I no, I get it. I get it. One hundred percent. I get it. Right. But if you're in them areas where Johnny is. You, you have to really play the game. And he played the game too. Because them, they must have played the game. Yeah. But them will say, you see me? I mean, I mean, You're not playing them the game there. I'm not playing no game. Nah. And man will say, oh, I love him. They still can't, they still can't, can't stop what I'm doing. Because God's still blessing me. Yeah. I've still got over 10 yards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've still, God's still blowing that breeze on me. I'm still, I'm providing for my family. I'm still, yeah. so, certain man, but the reason why I boot up, I boost up Johnny because I get you never come from where like, from where I am come from. You never got that. Yeah. But you still do your best to try and encapsulate yourself to that of your origin or the fact of that you are of Jamaican descent. Same. You still, yes. You try your best. Yeah. You understand? He, he's you're never best, ever let that go. Best, yeah. You get me. Your yes. best may not be up to the standards. Yeah. Right. But you're still a try to think. So because of that, no. Because of that, then I'm saying, yeah, I have to prop you. I have to prop you for that. 
And anytime I'm asked you to do anything for me, yeah, yeah, you're the first man to go do it. You know what I mean? It was through Johnny Nelson. Uh, this one I promoted. So 2011, it was Johnny that always said, "Come down to Skype for lunch." Oh saying, well, wow! Down. Okay, right. But he was the one, and I'm going to Skype for lunch when Darren Hammond won his British title. Uh, then times we're, we're buzzing with the hard docks thing and everything else. And we're, we've gone in there, and he was he was front. We had to do ringside. I remember prior to we got like, just be actually fear fame for the British title, so we got a British crowd. And we and we're there, and he's nervous to go on set. And I said, "What are you nervous for?" He said, "Bro, don't you get this? I used to watch this show as a kid, and now look, me and you are going to be on the show." What, but, Johnny and, Nelson? No, no, this is Darren. Oh, Hammond, I was going right? to say, right? Okay. Right, so, so, and I said, "What are you nervous for, Darren?" And he said, yeah, "Because look, this is like a dream to me, right?" So this is what I'm trying to say to you: to all their man, their dreams and that. To me, them things are poppy things. Pop, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, that mean nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm saying, like, the thing that really buzzes me is to know when, when my kids want to run up and cuddle up with me. This morning, I was watching cartoons with my daughters. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, on the floor, and I watch cartoons. I can know? hear that when I was speaking to you earlier. You could hear, like, the, the, the whole family, whole beauty of the yeah. family running yeah. around, which is right. lovely. Right. Right. Yeah. You can't, I want people to realize, you can't buy that, you know? Yeah. Especially the way that we are, even in COVID, you'd think that the love that you should have for your family should be magnified even more so. 100%. 100%. So, like I'm saying, the reason why I approach Johnny Nelson all the time because Johnny's a real one, and there have been certain things in the past where uh, I've backed certain, um, certain, certain people or certain figures um, who who have been painted in the public in a bad line. I've asked Johnny to, to say a few positive words on these people and all the rest of it, and he's, he's, he's run to my aid, right? So, because of that now, I don't stop big up um, 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 Johnny Johnny, Nelson. yeah. I'm working on big up Johnny Nelson. Johnny Nelson, good people, man. You know I mean? And, you know, I, I, I found that I went to one of his shows when he was fighting on the same undercard as um, Nassim... And we went to Sheffield and that was his last fight. And then he had this massive big party after. I mean, it was just so glamorous. And I just remember, I mean, we'd gone down with a few, I don't know where this glitchy noise is coming from. Um, we'd gone down with a few of the entourage with Blackie and everybody else. But Johnny was just so enigmatic even after the fight. He won the fight. And he was just... You know, it was, he finished, he got changed, he came out, the party's going on, but he was just so humble. He weren't playing like no big Billy Bollocks. And yeah, for me... Yeah, you know what? That's why I have to prop him. That's what I'm saying. He that's did. He's never been Billy, big so Billy so Bollocks. Hey, he, Johnny's good people. But like I said, it's like, to the industry, um, Johnny is, Johnny's that type of guy they're comfortable. That's a safe black guy to be with. Do you get know what I'm trying to say? To yeah, you? yeah. Right, safe. Know. I know it sounds horrible that we're using safe. that, but he's safe. No, he's safe. He's safe. He's, he's safe. safe. Right? He's got the Some look. He's got everything. Safe. You know, you're not going to have. Yeah. With me, they know there's days my head might just take. <laughs> right? They're not. Right? They don't know what's right? going to come out, Spencer. Right, they, know, they know. But the thing about it is this. They, 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 use, they try to use that as disadvantage because they never use me. Sky would never use me for live shows, right? Which now I'm saying, hold up a second. ESPN is way bigger than Sky. Yeah. Because ESPN on their app where the fights that went out, the, the fight that I covered the other day, um, at the beginning, three months ago, ESPN had seven million subscribers on their app, ESPN Plus app. Yeah. Today, as we're speaking, it has ten million five hundred forty-five thousand people. A lot. On their app. So within that space of four months, it's grown by three million. So I'm on that, guys. So um, one of the, one of the executive producers said, "Oh, we could never use you on a live show because you might say something." They have to remember, I'm in a podcast where I know that you're going to edit. I'm going to say some shit. You're going to cut it out. So what? You know what I mean? But on a live show, so that was their excuse. But their real excuse because they're bad man and they don't want to see a person like me reach certain heights yeah. because they know if I reach certain heights I'm not just bringing me one yeah yeah right you're bringing the every back and I the next youths them that's right because I ain't no young spring chicken no more I'm, 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 I'm 47 next month sis oh right? wow oh wow so I'm, looking good right? so when, I, 
Yeah, you understand? So when I'm going, I'm saying I'm going to join, come with some next shoes. So I'm bringing some next little youths. And it's not just about skin colour, it's about passion or this thing, right? But I know it's harder for black youths to go through. So, so the amazing thing is this. My Sky contract wasn't renewed last year, right? And when it wasn't renewed, and Johnny told me, said, Spence, they're magical. Because you know what? You're going to get picked up, you know? Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? So look there. So I'm working with MTK Global, I run their foundation, da, 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 all the rest of it, right? Then they say, oh, we got the shows now. So MTK Global doing our shows with ESPN Plus, and you'll be the ideal guy for expense. So, boom. You just elevated. Money? You elevated. Right. Okay, then, right? Now, it's the thing is this. People have to realize, when you're going for a drama, or you believe that you're going for a drama, right? Remember, God still got you, right? Number one. Number two, the reason why God still got you is because you're going through it. You know what I mean? And if you read scripture, like Psalms 23, yea, thy walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. I will say no evil. But check this one out. You're walking through it. Operative, you're walking through it. You're not walking. It doesn't say, they know I walk and I'm staying here forever. No, it's you're walking through it. Yeah. So I'm not saying any little, I'm walking through this. I said, why me? Me read myself for Especially when it comes to this thing. I don't say, no guy can't just this. But thing. if you don't, sense and no one else ain't gonna do it for you. Thank you don't you, need. Right. What's the song right. say? Me not do it for the love. Me not do it for the like. Oh, you know oh, what right. you're doing. Right. Exactly. You have so, to have the faith for yourself, brother. What I realize this is when the times when you're going through that drama, you are not being buried as they think they're burying you. They are planting you. Yeah. Right. So yeah. You're not being buried. You're being planted. And from I realize, brother, you're actually planted. So I understand the regurgitation of life. You're planting me. I'm yeah. going to bust again. Yeah. And I'll bust again. And I'm going to bust again. Yeah. And I'm going to bust again. And I'm going to keep on busting. And as I bust, I'm bringing other people with me. Because people don't hear me talk. I'm not boosting on other people. You know what I mean? There you people go. Have to realize. You see, there MTK you go. Global, there you go. This. Let me just tell you this now. Yeah. Because yeah. there's been a lot of flack about MTK, MTK Global. Why? Right? Why? Right? Now, now, there have been flack of the backdrop well, where it originally started from a blonde. They like to talk about this man, Daniel Kinnan, who has nothing to do with MTK Global now. He's he's off in the sunset now, living with his beautiful family, right? Right, okay. But, but if you know anything about the Daniel Kinnan story, it's a deep story. But let me tell you, that man's my brother. Right? Number one, I will never say anything of uh, 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 a formulated disrespect to that man. Because I know that man is a good man. man. I don't care. His intentions are good. I don't care about man's past, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's now. You're, you're dealing with now. Of your past. You can be a prisoner of your past or a pioneer of your future. And I'm seeing the pioneering moves that this man's done, right? Okay. And it was like, it came to the forefront when he spoke about Tyson Fury. And, like, well, Tyson Fury spoke about him saying, like, my, my advisor, Daniel Kinnahan, the, 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 the secured the deal for me and Andy Joshua and all the rest of it. Subsequently, after that, we got a lot of backlash. Blah. There was a tune that came out that was done by Jay Spades uh, uh, about all the stuff about this guy and all the rest of it. Yeah. 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 But, right? When you're hearing, guys, if you speak to people, individuals, nobody's got a bad word to say, say about them. him. Right? Nobody. But it took it takes my, one my person though to do that those beds. It takes yeah, one exactly. person. Right, right, right. So I'm saying that their brother there, what I mean is I salute that man on a different level. You know what I mean? If it have a gun in my house, I'll be a gun shot and I right. But I'm saying to you, <laughs> good man. Yeah. His family yeah. are good people. Right? And even more so, his family know my family. Good man. So I don't want to hear none of them. No, you don't need to because you now know uh, that regardless of what they're saying. Foolish left hand. Yeah, I don't business. You don't listen to me. I don't business. Let me tell you this, yeah? Man would go to man would go to certain people. Like, I remember some guy went to Daniel Kinn and said, oh, my Spencer's a racist. And you know what he said? I don't care. He's my brother. Simple. I can't even do Irish accent. Why are you like <laughs> Yeah. Right? So... <laughs> Right. Why would they think and you're racist? You know, I don't get that. I get it all the time. You know what? It's the easiest thing to come point out to somebody who is anti the establishment and uh, understands uh, understands this thing of uh, uh, imperialistic mindsets. Right, right. And but that's just but that's just them being uncomfortable about themselves. It, it, 
come on, you know this, you know this. That's well, them being uncomfortable I mean, about themselves, brother. Sorry. All, all, all of a sudden, there's, there's a change. But like I said, that guy there, I got, I got a lot, I got a lot of love yeah. for that man. I, I saw the roster that MTK has and the people behind it. It is huge. So anybody who doesn't know anything about MTK, you absolutely you everybody, need everybody, to go like online. Said, every, everybody knows. So the guy who, who is the CEO now of the company is a man called Bob Yalen. Yes. Lovely man. He, he, was a, he was a big guy. I think it was ESPN. He was a big guy for... But one of the nicest people that you can meet, like... Daniel Kinnan stepped away from boxing now, right? So as he stepped away from boxing, but you know what I mean, you can step away from something, but the the, the footprints are still there. Yeah. Um, but he said, I can understand why he stepped away because there's a lot of grief and a lot of stress, and when you hear government governments speaking out against you and stuff like that, they speak. You know what? I don't need to bring the yeah yeah. To you anymore. Let me just I'm, remove I'm, myself. I'm it, right? Yeah. Which must be which must be a hurtful thing because I know the man loves boxing. Right. 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 Seriously, I I. I know that I love boxing, but I know that if any time I want to talk to that guy, all I do is mention the fight. Yes, yeah. it. We're gone. It's a different tangent. So, but Bob Yalen is, is doing great stuff. Um, and you got um, the Conlon brothers as well. And Jamie Conlon, he's he's uh, vice president for the company. And it's just, it's just blowing. And the mere fact that, like I said, when people said that I weren't going to... Like, I, man said to me at Sky, I was too much of a liability. Hey, this Libby. I was too much of a liability to be used on a live show. But, but, here you, but, but there you are. Okay. Here Wasn't here that, isn't that SPN and MTK that you were doing program. analysis for on Thursday night? Thank you. Which has 10 million um, subscribers. Oh, so I was, I was watching. Said, when Satan thinks that he's burying you, he don't realise that God's plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking a leaf out of your book, babe. Right. Thank you for the inspiration. I'm taking a leaf out of your right. book. Right. Do you know I what just, I'm saying you know to you? Mean, so, you I, know. I just know this thing. So, yeah. you know I mean, I know this thing where, like, we as human beings, we've got to activate our blessing, but we don't realize it that we're blessed. If you woke up in the morning, you got a roof over your head and food in your fridge, electricity, hot water, yeah. shut yeah. up. I don't yeah. want to hear no talk. Yeah. Mouth. For real. You know for real. I for real. And, 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 you know what I mean? And you may not have the biggest of are the best, but style up your thing where you're up. You know what I mean? I'm doing it. Andre Ward, Look, Andre Ward he's now, one of, I was gonna, yeah, I'm coming to him Andre now. Ward he's like one of my favourites. Right, and he's my friend. I love I mean, Andre Ward. I love his right. spirituality. I love everything about him. I love his journey. You know, the, the last fight, you know, when you watch the story between, I mean, I've got it on my Skybox, which I just play over and over, you know, from round, the first, you know, the first fight, part one, part two, with Kovalov and, you know, it, Kovalov, sorry. And I just, everything. The man is just 100. And when I saw that you knew him and then he, you were giving him advice. Before he go fought on, the first on. fight, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. I was like, Spencer, really? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I got a lot of time for Andre Ward. Yeah, Andre Ward is a dog. He's a dog. I remember saying like when he retired. Remember, he's a humble man. So say if Andre Ward's made twenty million from boxing or thirty million from boxing because he's a humble man, he's within himself. He's a family man. Looks after his wife. Absolutely. God fearing man. Absolutely. Thirty million is like three hundred million. Yeah. Right, because you live within yourself. And, and and there's not many people that I can listen to talk boxing I believe that I've learned something from him. No, I'm not being cocky, right? I learn when he speaks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. The, the, you know what I mean? Agreed. He, he, Agreed. He a, yeah. Him, even Timothy Bradley's partner, but I learned from Andre Wood. When Andre Wood talks his thing, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things on lip time. Let yeah, just, I mean, and he's got good camp, you know, like with Virgil Hill behind him and everything else. Virgil They're, Hunter, I'm sorry, Virgil Hunter, sorry, oh sorry, God, sorry forgive me, no way, Virgil no Hunter. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I must be thinking Virgil, of a Grant. I've got Grant Hill on my brain. That's basketball. You know, you know Virgil, you know Virgil's his godfather, right? No, I didn't. I know that he right. he took over. He was there for when his father died. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, his yeah, story yeah. is just so traumatic. Yeah. And, you know, so I know that Virgil has been there literally from the get-go. And he's, yeah, and he's get kept him, he's got Virgil him there the all brought, these years. That brought Andre Ward to Jay Prince. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And, and just for the mere fact, like, you know what I mean? He said, like, no, yo, he went to he went to Prince, you know, Prince, and there's this kid, he's, he's bad. And, like, uh, but he's on road. He's doing road team. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
but like we could we could we could kind of groom this kid up and da, 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 and he did it and you know, that's why I say Lord J Prince but the mere fact that look at the heights that that guy's climbed but he's a, what I mean like he's a beautiful human being yeah a beautiful human being because like I first met him what was about four years ago when we first actually met um, I first met him then and like me and him was, me and him was reasoning about boxing he's like man you know the game innit I'm like yeah a little bit right so he was reasoning was you being modest there oh just a little bit <laughs> yeah a little, a little tiny you know what I mean uh, but we just talked about his career and everything else and then from then we just got on it. See, we got to keep in touch. We got da, da, da. And then from then we just been in touch. And I just, like I said, I have got a lot of time for Andre Wood. He's a very, very he is, he is decent human being. That's another person that I know that you you like as well. And it's someone that who, if you don't know who this person is, then you should even be watching boxing. Yeah, Sugar but Ray Leonard. Man. He is just it's, the way the way this thing is like. I worked with Sugar Ray Leonard um, in. What was it 2000, yeah, 2008? No, sorry, 2007. I worked with Sugar Leonard for the and Barry McGuin for England or UK versus USA contenders. Oh, I didn't right? know that. Yeah, so I was working, I was working with a kid called Anthony Small. Okay, he went all crazy, right? Me. Right, I prayed for him to, to sort himself out and get his mind right. Um, but yeah, so Sugar Leonard was my hero. So I could name you everything on Sugar Leonard. I bet you could. I was sitting there going, yeah. mate, you know, some Saturday nights, you know, especially through COVID, it's like just putting on the old, you know, the days of the Hagler and the Hearns and, you know, do you know what I mean? The Duran fights with of, of Sugar Ray Leonard. It's it's timeless. You do, and I don't think there's much that can, you know, that I can see in today's boxing that matches up to it. Literally. Well, the reason, the reason, the reason why it was because of this is like, back in those days, the best, wanted to fight the best right absolutely I think, I think Andre Wood said it the best even though I've said it but I think Andre Wood said it the best recently then, uh, go watch it there's a thing called the, the World Weight Division on ESPN but it's on YouTube uh, and Andre Wood said what people seem to forget is like when Floyd Mayweather reached the level of money Mayweather he could pick and choose who he wanted to fight. Fight, yes, he could. But people, people seem to forget the tough fights they had with Corrales. People seem to forget um, the fight that he had with um, what's his name, um, Hazel Chavez. Yeah. People seem to forget the fights. They forget those fights that built him or but, Jose Luis Castillo. Yeah. They forget those fights. Yeah. Where and those are classic fight fights. Fight fight. On yes. Right. And then times he was pretty worthless. Right. But then when he when he turned to Money Mate after his first pay per view fight against Gatti, and then the massive pay per view fight that he had with uh, Oscar De La Hoya, yeah, people, right, people seem to forget that he's he's boss now, so he he's in that position, but he's earned the right to do the pick and choosing team. Yeah, but don't and you think that's a bit really ironic? You never really pick and choose against Easy Man. Yeah, but that's a bit ironic now because like you came out and said it in yeah, even um two days ago that. Mayweather speaking out about it, where they are messing around with the divisions. They've now awesome. added another division, so now we've got eighteen I'm divisions. I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just thinking he could pick and chick. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. But I'm saying, right. you so, know, when you look at how fighters think now, everybody thinks with the mentality of of Floyd Money Mayweather. They're not thinking that pretty boy Floyd Mayweather when he was a fighter that like he was ready to clap out anybody, and that's the difference. Yeah. So it is an unwillingness for the best to fight the best because how it goes now is like you want to earn as much money as you can yeah. with as minimal risk. So yeah. I think someone like Chris Eubank Senior kind of changed up the game a little piece. Yeah. So a man's like because Chris Eubank Senior used to fight some proper idiots. You know? Yeah. I'm now, thinking the game. No, no, no. But, I, mean, <laughs> I think he's hilarious. <laughs> No, he did. I did. I beat up Chris Senior for certain things because he's a guy and he's my friend. But he did. But he was saying, yeah, this is a business. And I'm, I was you know. waiting for you to do the the, 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 the voice because when you did that the, on this video, right? <laughs> this, um, this is a business, Spencer. And um, if you... Uh, you can't find your no business being in there. I'm saying, listen, brother. You always had a good colour artist, right? And the thing about 
Eubanks, is, Chris Eubanks didn't have to be a con artist because people seem to forget. You know what I mean? November 1990, M.E.N. No, sorry. Um, NEC, Birmingham, when you beat Nigel Ben. Yeah. People seem to forget when you had to bite down on your gum On your gum shield, yeah. Right. Uh, September 21st, 19... Um, 1991 against Michael Watson and you knocked out Michael Watson unfortunately he he, 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 he was damaged he damaged, him, yeah, he damaged right? him yeah people seem to forget that when Chris Eubank had to bring the team he'd bring it yeah so Chris Eubank never had to take them easy fights against them because he, he was tough enough to, to compete to compete anyone. yeah he did you know I mean because Chris Eubank was a G yeah but it's me- I'm, I, I have to say is when you go from the Jamaican, it's when you do the accent from when Chris Bank is like Chris Eubanks is like, oh, you know, he's so posh, and then he, he, he comes out and he goes, yo, brother, you know, <laughs> he goes to the yardie. I tell you the time. I tell you the time when Chris Eubanks <laughs> come out with a yardie. When he was in preparation for the Michael Watson fight, and they had the and they had the the press conference, and he was there talking. Yeah, and then. Michael Watson winding up as well because Michael Watson, you know, a good looking man. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, pretty. Like, he, was, he was pretty. Watson, he was like, pretty. Michael he was, was like, pretty. Yeah, a good looking man. He's like, oh, is it really Chris? Yes, he went out you back. He goes, look, you lost the fight and that's that. And then you back turn around, listen, this is what I said to you, Michael, if, um, if you were to beat me, I wouldn't begrudge you. Um, but you are begrudging me the winner. And that's wrong. And then Michael said, is it really Chris? And then Chris Ubeck switch. Chris Ubeck said, no, yo. Oh, you don't like me, and he stopped. But like, oh, you don't like me. This is me. And he just got up and walked off. But you see, and then from then I said, "Round three, she makes a little yard." Yardy. <laughs> he does. He just thinks that he, you have to just catch him, and he switches. Right? Yeah. But- <laughs> no, that's too much. But I'm gonna come. We're gonna bring it up to heat, up to date, right? So now you are um, at MTK and part of ESPN. And, you know, I, I, for one, when you made the announcement, I was really proud because it's, it's a journey and a half to where you are, you know, from what you've been through, for all the stations you've been on, for, for Santanta, you know, Satanta, Sky, you know, Box Nation, um, you, you know, and then you did a bit with Sky again. And then now you're within your own rights now, Spencer. You're with your own rights. And the whole committee of, as I said, the whole team... And I don't know what that noise is, but it needs to stop. But um, but the whole team together um, is a testament to where you are. Now, what I'm going to come into now is this. We're not going to go in and about um, Deanta Wilder. Uh, I wanted to know what is your views about women boxers? I think it's great. Only because of the skill level that's being demonstrated now by the team because if I went back 15 years ago, the skill levels wasn't being demonstrated because you'd have somebody who was supremely talented, like a Leila Ali. I was just... And, or, and like Wolf. Like Kirstie Martin, right? Christy Martin. They'd be really talented, but then they could, the people they compete against were rubbish. Yep. Now we're getting 50-50 fights. Right. There's what about Ann Wolf? This is half of the big boy fight. What you know about me? Wolf? Well, pardon me? What about Wolf? Ann Wolf, was the name? Is it Wolf? Ann Wolf was a gangster. I've got an interview with her. I'm going to say it to you. I've got an interview with her. Anne Wolf was Anne Wolf was a she was a genius. You know? Yeah, you know what I mean, Anne Wolf could clap out, man. I'm yeah. telling you that now. Was it she? Right? Um, she so, trained. Who else did she train? Was it Kirtland, um, James Kirtland, and who else? Yeah, yeah, she James James Kirtland, the vicious knockout artist. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So yeah, I'm a big fan of women boxing. Um, there are some very very. Was it Savannah Marshall who won the world title last week? Yeah. She's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, Clarissa Shaw, she's excellent. Uh, you go through go through the whole list and so right up to date we've got so many good fighters right now and it's not women boxing it's boxing it's boxing but I just wanted to hear your well, take on it because right, if I came into my house and I said right I'm going to go watch Serena Williams play I'm not thinking to myself I'm going to watch female tennis I'm thinking that oh, I'm going to watch tennis. tennis I'm going to watch tennis I'm yeah. watching the tennis you see Serena Williams yeah. Bad. yeah so I think the same kind of thing now can be can be paid and the Jews can be paid now to the female uh, contributors of professional boxing because it is, it's, it's the class is there. It's very, very good. So, yeah. I have heard um, in, you know, some groups that I'm in um, and it is frowned upon. You know, guys are like, why well, are they what? there? Or, and I'm no, saying... No, no, no. no. That's, that's very, very stupid if you think about it because yeah. the thing about it is this, it's called the noble art for a reason. Reason, right? Right. 
and it's 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 noble because of the profound intensity of the skill level being demonstrated. Yes. So if I see yes. school being skill is skill, I mean I don't care yeah. what other channel. Yeah. Right? I mean I don't care what it, what colour they are, I don't care. You know what I mean? It's the what skill set. I don't care. If you're demonstrating the skill that I know that bro, that's wicked. Yeah. I don't care who's showing me, it's not showing it to me. So Oh, someone says that you've got issues. I think it might be all right now. I think we're okay now. Um, so tonight we've got Katie Taylor against Gutierrez. Yeah, Gutierrez ain't no joke. Uh, listen, I wanted to hear, I just, because this is a rematch. Yeah, this is not the rematch. Not I'm sure uh, it's a no, rematch. It's not a rematch. It's not, it's not. It's not the rematch. Because no. there's one that she felt and, the, you know, it yeah, literally that, went to the yeah, wire. Yeah, yeah. Right, Kate, Katie Taylor is very good. I still got her to win all points in this fight. And you I'm think so? Kick. My back is running out, sis. So yeah, I've yeah, yeah, her, yeah. I've got, I've got her winning all points. Um, you've got Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Bell. She's fighting for a world title. That's well. right. You know I mean, after a great um, win over Shannon Courtney, so I'll give yeah. her the props and award. And you've got Terence Crawford versus Kel Brook. Yeah, who have you got tonight? I've got Terence Crawford winning. I don't think it'll be easy for him. I think Kelbrook's going to rough him up for the first five rounds, but then that means luck. And I think Terence Crawford will take off. I think Terence Crawford is supremely and sublimely um, skillful. And I think he's got skills to pay the bills. And he also showed he's got heart to play the part. Yeah. But he did get done down in his last fight. Uh, and but, they're not calling yeah. him that. So, uh, I saw that with yeah. the way in this morning, early hours this morning. Um, Kel doesn't look like he's scared. If he is scared, he's not showing. He's going out there with a heart because there's no reason to, you know, get rid of, um, not get rid of, but not have Dominic Ingle in your camp and go somewhere. Dominic Ingle with his camp. It would have been better for him, but it is what it is, sis. So that's what he wanted. That's his drive. I, it's going to be a hard fight. I totally agree with you tonight. It's going to be a really hard fight. But tonight, there's a lot. I know you said your, your phone's going. Is there anything, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it before the phone does die, there was so much I wanted to talk, but you covered everything without me even have to ask. But one thing I want to say is thank you. Good luck with everything that's going with MTK and ESPN. Um, I don't think you need any luck. It is beautiful. I'm watching the journey. I'm watching the fights. The undercard fights this week were really good. Oh, God. Balassi. I was watching everything. It was so good. It was so good. I enjoyed those fights. Do you know what I'm saying? So anyone, I've got a few boxing friends. I will be passing all the details on to them to say they need to check out when. And, oh, good luck. I know that you've been with IFT at the, is it IF uh, TV for a long time. Um, they've always been in that corner with you guys, with Kangasi and all that lot, you know. Look at me rushing it now because I don't want the phone to die, you know. Um, but you've been with those guys a long time. Is there anything you want to say about them before you jump off? Listen, um, anybody on social social media platforms, because when you put out your show, sis, it's going to get numbers. Because I get numbers. It's not even saying it's impossible, but I just get numbers. So God's blessed me like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say, like, anybody, it was IFL TV that gave me the nickname knowledge. It was Coogan Cashes that gave me that nickname. That's, oh, was right. it? Yeah, he in, he's interviewed everybody, but he knows that when you're talking to me on this game, man, I'm on point. So, like I said, I owe him a lot because they had their 10th year anniversary the other day. Yes. And I props, I props those guys because they, they're the real ones. But they, the reason why I props them even more because they, they used to come to me for advice, right? And no, this is true, though. Um, and so I props those guys, they're respecters of knowledge. Hence why I got the name of knowledge. So yeah. respect for me. And I'm a big respecter of them because I respect anybody's hustle. And they've really grafted. So I props them enough. You know what I mean? And just like I said, I big up anybody who loves a sport because if you love boxing, then you're meant to love me because I love boxing. Hey. As simple as that. Hey. You know I mean? And I'm going to big up anyone. And I'm saying like, um, uh, Miss Maxwell, we need more females <laughs> who talk boxing, who know boxing because you actually know boxing. You're not trying to thing. You know the thing. There was a difference. <laughs> so when I see that, then I'll say, yeah, I'm going to come on your channel because there's enough. I get I get enough people got their channels, you know. I'm not reading them. I'm saying, nah, nah, nah. But I know now that I'll come on your channel, your channel's going to bust because once that do up little snippets and put that on my inside, I get, I get numbers. So okay. I know I'll get 30,000 for putting up a little snippet on this thing now. I'm so, blessed. I'm blessed if you do. I, to nah, me... No, no, but it, does, it directs traffic towards you for your thing to, to, to grow. Because each one teach, teach one. one. I appreciate you know I mean? that. 
I appreciate so when you, that. When you, when, you, when you get up, you're meant to go back. When you get up, you're meant to go back and drag the other people them to come back up with you. That's yeah. the thing. You know what I mean? Because happiness is not complete unless you share it. Share it. I, right. I, I, I just wanted you to just... I... You know, even when I was putting everything together, as I said, I've got a whole, there was like 10 slides, but I didn't have to, because today was so natural. It was the naturalness of just you and I just conversing about, I didn't have to drop names. I don't have to, because I know my, I know, my, like, I'm going to be confident for, for a change. I know my boxing. I know my boxing. And it... It was great speaking to someone who has the enthusiasm. I mean, I get people that message me in my inbox and will say things like, oh, you know, for a woman, you know, you know a lot about boxing. And I just find that so... It's not disrespectful. Huh? No, it's condescending. Condescending, it's that's the word. And I think... I'm going to break this one really down quick. It's going to be quick. Yeah. Listen, I'm everybody, saying. his phone's going to die. But I just right, want to say to thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. With right, everything, and I will be having you back at some point later the down females, the line. Huh? Females are the gods of this universe. The woman is. So when someone says you know a lot about something for a female, you're not knowing that who was the producer of the male for the male to know what he knows. And seeing as the mother is the is the the first teacher of the child, the renowned quotation of the hand that rocks the cradle does what rules the world. So when we see men must. The men are only bussing because of the females. The men are only bussing or doing what they're doing because of the woman. Because the woman that is the elevator. Do you understand? Thank you. The hieroglyphic writings, and we're going back something like 10 BC, they had pictures in hieroglyphic writing of women laying down and men standing on top of them. And, yeah. you know, you get great... Uh, anthropologists who will turn around and say isn't this sexist the men are standing on top of the women no the men were deliberately standing on the woman because the woman would be the bridge to elevate them to go where they're going standing right? in the truth baby right so therefore when we look at the woman we are looking at god because god in his genius whether you want to go by science or if you want to go by uh, religious standpoint or spiritual standpoint, that the heavens and the earth were created out of darkness. The woman does this every time she conceives in her womb of the three monthly cycles. So therefore, the woman by it is God. What do you mean God? Of course she's God, because she's created of the heavens and the earth. So the woman's God. So therefore, I love the it. power of the woman, and even more so, the black woman is God. And I've said it, and I'm like taking that back. Reason why? Because you were the first on the on the planet. We know they've done, they've done, they've done. You 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 read the book by Dr. Leakey, right? He went all <laughs> around the place. And where did he go? He went to to what was it uh, 3.8 million years old? And who did he find? He found Lucy Zinzanthropus. Who was that? That was a black woman from Africa, the mother of civilization, the oldest remains. Of what? Of that we have Rich. life. We have the X and the Y chromosome. The X chromosome is produced by the female. The Y is a mutation of the X that men have. So therefore, obviously, women are here first. They've been dehumanized and degrenegated for too long a time. Time, right? And right, right. And we must realize that when we're looking at that the woman that we are looking, we are looking at God in his earthly characteristics and that's how i'm going to leave the show peace two fingers and big up to your wife and your family and your children 100 percent niceness thank you to everyone that was talking to me in the chat room um this is master knowledge spencer fearing please check him out he is amazing if, if you are into your sport boxing this is the man and it's not just sport he actually goes to schools he's been in the hall as i was telling everyone before you came on he's an inspirational um uh, motivator he's a mentor if you need to talk this is a man to reach out to reach out to some people are just saying to you thank you thank you so from the chat room people are saying to you thank you spencer I will talk to you later. I will send this to you. Uh, bless God you, bless you. I said, oh, Tunde, please say hi to Tunde. You, He's also. Can you just quickly big up your um your podcast show? He has a podcast show called. Uh, the Fight Is Right podcast is on the Stamina for Sale YouTube channel. 
it's a wicked podcast. That's it is really, really good. Really, really good. Right? The fight is right. <laughs> I'm going to put it up. I'll put it up for you. All right. Love you, love you, love you. Blessed me today. Have a fantastic day and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> oh. Uh, did I just burst a sweat? Did I just burst a sweat? <laughs> Oh, my God. Thank you to those that did hang in there because we had some technical issues. Thank you for those who may have joined us late. Um, it's always going to be the way um, appreciated. Those who sent me a message that they shared. Um, my phone's just been popping. I've had to try and keep it silent. But thank you so much for joining me today. Standing in my truth on the sports edition show um, next week. Uh, we actually next week, Saturday, I think my show is going to go out a lot later because um, I, I just want to big this up before I go. We have a sponsored walk for pancreatic cancer and it's 14 of us within my group. See, there we go. Standing in my truth, baby. But anyway, we've called Pandemic Creatic. We're a team with them. We're putting up our photos a bit later on. Um, we're not asking you to sponsor us, but if you can put 50 pence or a one pound in it, I'll put up the details later on. So next week, Saturday, you'll find that we'll be doing a live show with us walking from Greenwich, um, Greenwich Island, um, from Thames Island down to Greenwich and from Greenwich to um, the London Eye. That's 24 miles that we are supposed to be walking. I don't know how I'm going to do 24 miles. I need my chocolate. I think I need a bag of sweets. So I don't know who gave me the bright idea to tell everybody we're going to be walking 24 miles. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. Pandemic Creatic is the team of girls, 14 of us. Walking for Pancreatic Cancer. I'll put the details up a bit later. If anyone wants to watch us next week, Saturday. And that's what we're going to be doing. Um, big up to the England team. You won 3-0. Um, and let's see what the rest of the, what Sunday is going to be provide. And then next week, we're back to normal football. I'm not saying I don't like England playing. But, but tonight, fight night, if you can, Sky Sports. You can check out the fight with Katie Taylor. Um, and don't forget, we've got Kel Brooks fighting T. Bud Crawford, Terence Crawford tonight in the wee hours of the morning. If I can, I'll put some details up because I think a few people have been asking me what time is it on? Where's a link, etc., etc. But right now, what are we doing? We're in lockdown. There isn't anything else. Um, and so at the end of the day, if you like sports, watch sports. If you like golf, watch golf. If you like F1, which is what I'm going off to do right now, I'm going to go and watch Lewis Hamilton qualify, hopefully for pole position. Um, one of the things I must say when I'm talking about F1, in a couple of weeks, I have got someone from F1 coming on. So anyone who's an F1 enthusiast, I hope you're going to join me. I can't say who just yet, but I'm so excited. Anyway, contain yourself, Valerie, contain yourself. And um, in the midweek, I've got prostate cancer. We're going to be talking about prostate cancer um, because it's Movember. So we're going to have a couple of and uh, people coming on with their graphs and why they're doing it. Because prostate, prostate cancer is rife. Um, just being diagnosed by someone in my family. Um, just kind of get my head around it. Not, not the only reason. It's something that I used to champion a few years ago. And so I'm using this platform in the hope that things that I see around me, I will always try to bring to the table. I've also got my girls coming on um, the most motivational team. And that should be amazing. And I've also got Dags the Statement. He show, he is another promoter. Um, but this is not sports. Um, but there's so much going to be going on. Um, oh, God, someone just sent me a message. Oh, thank you. Um, amen to you too. Thank you. Um, but I thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. It's not easy. I'm going to my bed at stupid o'clock at night trying to do research of everybody that's coming on the show. Only because I would like to think that people are going to be very informative to you and you can take something away with you um, on your daily basis. So I'm going to be signing out. I just want to say to you all, keep your mind free. Keep your heart clean. Try and do your best. I know we're in lockdown, but if you stay safe, stay clean, stay, you know, do the best you can. Some people can't wear a mask. Those who believe in wearing a mask, please do so. But at the same time, try and protect each other. Try and love each other because that's all we have left. And on that note, I'm going to sign out. I think, oh, I'm going to sign out with that music I was playing earlier. Where is it? Where is it? Woo -hoo -hoo. 
I'm going to sign up with a little bit of music. Oh, here we go, here we go. I'm going to dance. You can stay there and watch me dance if you like. But this is a good little tune. And this tune I'm going to buy out is called Keep Trying, Keep Trying. Don't let the world get you down. So that's me signing out. Signing out. Keep on trying. Love you all. Keep on flying. Keep flying. Who's going to dance with me? Anybody that's still there, you can still dance with me because I am. Do you know what? I might have to do it. Oh, shit. I've got Joe Hunt next Friday. Proper live DJ set in the house next Friday. So if you want to rave live on my show, tune in next Friday for the Friday fortnightly music show. And I'm out of here. Oh, I've got my... um. Got the work top on, let's go. Ready? <laughs> My workout belt. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. My exercise. Have a great day, everybody. I'm going to be here dancing. But when you tune out, have a great day. Hey! Well, actually, great afternoon. Tell me my truth. Woo! City with the... It's in the sky. See the tiny houses back in the distance. Train can go fast because the wind resistance. Kind of going through my mind. The track is backed by Black Magic. Just another Londoner who's stuck in hell. Ready? Come on. Keep trying. We're flying. Emotions take me to the other side. We're flying. No trying. Time will pass you by. Hey. We're flying. We're flying. Emotions take me to the other side. We're flying. No trying. Time will pass you by. Bye, folks. See you later. I love the life of the Keep trying, we're flying. Emotions take me to the other side. We're flying, no dying. Time will pass you by. Keep flying, we're trying. Emotions take me to the other side. We're flying, no crying. Time will pass you by. Enjoy your life, folks, as much as you can. I'm sending that love and blessings. Anyone that's got people in hospital, suffering with COVID, you are in my thoughts, you're in my prayers, and I love you. Bye.